Hi everyone, Laszlo Montgomery here with another Chengyu, another Chinese saying for votre collection croissant. Another good one for you today, a heroic one I might add. This story, like most of these Chinese sayings, harkens back to ancient times, but not as ancient as we're used to. Today, we only go back as far as the Western Qin Dynasty, when they had their capital first at Luoyang, and for the last few years in Chang'an, the Simas of the Jin weren't the first ones to govern from those two most ancient capitals of China, and they weren't the last. The Western Jin lasted from 265 to 316, falling hard around the time of the great Constantine I in Rome. These were the good old days for the Jin, but this dynasty didn't last long, unfortunately. You remember from all those past China History Podcast episodes that once the Western Jin fell in 316, China faced about two and a half centuries of disunity before Yang Jian unified the lands in 581 and founded the Sui Dynasty. Our Cheng Yu for this time comes to us courtesy of the Jin Shu, the Book of Jin, compiled during the early Tang Dynasty during the reign of the great Taizong Emperor. You'll find this Cheng Yu mentioned in the 49th scroll in the chapter Yin Yi Lie Zhuan. And the first of the two stars of our Cheng Yu story was a crony of the Simas named Jia Chong. He had held a multitude of titles in the service of the Cao Wei emperors during the Three Kingdoms period. And thanks to his loyal service and his association with Sima Yan, the dynasty founder, Jia Chong was a high-ranking official. You may recall Jia Chong's daughter, Jia Nanfeng, from one of the sayings from last season, Go Wei Xu Diao. She was the no-good empress of the dim-witted and ill-fated Emperor Hui. Now, the story behind today's saying comes from this time. Mu Ren Shi Xin. Let's quickly look at the four characters that make up this Cheng Yu. Mu means wood, and Ren is a person or people, or in this case, a man. Mu Ren, a wooden man. Shi means a rock or stone, and Xin means heart. So... Mu Ren, Shi Xin, Wood Man, Stone Heart. And those four characters were ascribed to our hero today, and his name was Xia Tong. Now, Jia Chong was a real person and has a Wikipedia entry and everything, but Xia Tong, he was a fictional person, or maybe not, but he did make it to the Book of Jin. He was originally from the Xiaoshan area of Hangzhou, but on this day when our story takes place, when he crossed paths with the official Jia Chong, he had his boat moored to the west bank of the Luo River that ran right through the center of the ancient capital of Luoyang. On this day when fate brought these two men together, Jia Chong was out and about with his entourage enjoying some recreation, and they decided to have a party right on the banks of the Luo River. And after they made themselves comfortable, this official espied Xia Tong sitting in his boat, pensively staring straight ahead. And Jia Chong saw that the boat seemed to be overflowing with all these medicinal herbs or plants. While everyone was engaged in a high state of merriment near a pontoon bridge that crossed the Luo River, Xia Tong remained on his boat completely oblivious of them, continuing to stare straight ahead, paying them no mind whatsoever. Jia Chong was intrigued. There was something about Xia Tong that struck a nerve in him, and he wondered, who is this person with such a grave expression, so unmoved by this whole scene going on all around him, not even looking up to notice them or acknowledge their presence? Jia Chong got out of his carriage and walked towards the riverbank, determined to find out more about him. He began engaging Xia Tong in some friendly conversation, asking his name and where he came from, and, you know, from this small talk and chit-chatting, Jia Chong could tell this young man, Xia Tong, seemed like no ordinary person. He asked Xia Tong, what was he doing in town? Why had he come to the capital, over a thousand kilometers away to the northwest from his hometown in Zhejiang province. Xia Tong explained that his mother was deathly ill, and he had come all this way to the capital 
to procure some medicine. And this explained the dried herbs and whatnot that filled up his boat. Jia Chong inquired why such a seemingly intelligent and capable guy like him lived out in the sticks and hadn't tried to make it in the city and perhaps become an official. Xia Tong grew somber, and his mood changed at once. He said, The life of an official, serving in the government, wasn't for him. He said he knew all about the evils perpetrated by government officials for the sake of power. Politics wasn't his cup of tea. He had become fed up with the ways of people and society and yearned for a life that was pure and that embraced all the old values. So he explained he had become a hermit and couldn't have been more content and satisfied living a quiet existence down in Xiaoshan. In fact, Xia Tong told Jia Chong that the sooner he left the capital, the better, and he was just getting ready to start heading home now. Jia Chong decided to have a little fun. As their little encounter warmed up, Jia Chong requested a few things of Xia Tong. For example, first he tested him how well he could steer his boat in the middle of the Luo River. Xia Tong thereupon proceeded to exhibit his precision handling of his vessel, and everyone, not just Jia Chong, was impressed with his skills and the way he maneuvered his boat. Then he asked Xia Tong to sing for everyone a song from his hometown. Xia Tong thereupon began singing a song that harkened back to the times of Yu the Great, the legendary Xia Dynasty founder, as well as the fabled Cao E, who, as legend goes, died in 143, trying to save her drowning father. All the swells lounging comfortably on the riverbanks were moved to tears by Xia Tong's singing. Jia Chong hopped on board Xia Tong's boat, and decided to test him further. In their short time together, he had become utterly enthralled by Xia Tong and was determined that this young man give up this nonsense down in his hometown and join him in the capital to serve the Jin Dynasty Emperor. Back in those days, becoming an official in the imperial government was just about the highest hope one could have in life. Yet Jia Chong one of the highest-ranking officials in the land, personal friend with the Sima royal family, he couldn't convince this principled guy to say, I'm in. He stood next to Xia Tong and thought of a way to get through to him. Knowing full well about the aspirations and weaknesses of men, Jia Chong thought he'd tempt Xia Tong with promises of power. At once, he yelled out to his soldiers who guarded the whole noble entourage and shouted out orders to execute a number of drills and maneuvers. And they did so in the most meticulous and precise fashion. And Jia Chong turned to Xia Tong and said, Look at that, my boy. Come, join me in the government. Become an official, and you too will have such power to command men. Xia Tong couldn't have been more unfazed by this display of power. It didn't change his expression. Okay, power didn't impress him, but Jia Chong came up with another idea. He called out to the bevy of singing girls who were partying with the group on the riverbank to provide some entertainment, and he ordered them to sing, dance, and to amuse Xia Tong, and perhaps arouse him with their beauty and sensualness. And they danced right there at the water's edge, giving it their all. And Jia Chong nudged Xia Tong and said, Look at that, my friend. No ordinary man can behold such women. Come, join me in the government, and you can enjoy their beauty and charms any time. Yet Xia Tong just stared straight ahead, as bored as can be, completely unmoved by what he had just witnessed. Nor was he taken in by Jia Chong's words, clearly wishing for this to end so he could turn his boat around and start heading back home. Jia Chong threw up his hands in disgust and hopped out of Xia Tong's boat and roared, This punk is made of wood and has a heart made of stone. He was a Mu Ren, a wooden man who had a Shi Xin, a stone heart. And everyone there, who was on hand that afternoon to witness the events, were moved and spoke of this encounter to others in the capital. And word spread about this 
principled man who remained so true to his morals and principles and what mattered to him in life, and that no amount of money, sensual pleasure, or power could sway him. And Xia Tong became an inspiration to others as well who were pure of heart and refused to deviate from their chosen path in life, even in the face of the most powerful temptations that the material world had to offer. Jia Chong called him a mu ren, a wood man, with a shi xin, a heart made of stone. And people would pass around the story of the high-ranking Jin Dynasty official Jia Chong and the kid from Xiaoshan in Hangzhou who couldn't be bought or seduced away from his chosen path in life. If you're someone like Xia Tong who commits themselves to a cause or profession, even if it doesn't bring you fame, wealth, or material comforts, and you never lose sight of your objectives, even in the face of the most powerful temptations for an easier or more pleasure-filled life, you're the Xia Tong type. A mu ren, shi xin, you can't be bought. You're someone too principled to yield to temptation that might take your eyes off the prize you have committed yourself to achieve. Later on in the Song Dynasty, this mu ren shi xin term was also applied to those who were utterly lacking in emotion or love or compassion. They were uncaring and had a heart made of stone. So at first, this mu ren shi xin term was used in a positive way, but later on, it also came to be used to describe people considered cold-hearted and unfeeling. Better to be the former than the latter, I say, if you're the mu ren shi xin type at all. And with that, we will call it a day. And as I said before, there's a whole lot more where that came from. Remember, if you want to learn more about the Jin Dynasty, or any dynasty for that matter, go check out our brother program at the China History Podcast, one of the several offerings available from teacup.media. Everything's available at Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, Pocket Casts, Overcast, and all the other fashionable and popular podcast apps. As always, a big thanks goes out to Reliable Emma, managing the whole operation at the teacup, Cheng Yu Yan Jiu Zhongxin. Yeah, it's a demanding job, but somebody has to do it. Thanks, Emma. That's all I got. Laszlo Montgomery here, thanking you for listening and signing off from fantastic L.A. in the state of California, admitted into these United States back in September of 1850, first year in the unhappy reign of the Xianfeng Emperor. I hope you enjoyed this little Cheng Yu. If you did, then think about joining us next time for more words of wisdom at the Chinese Sayings Podcast.